guy said, we can't work with Akata. You can't mm-hmm. work with Akata. That's a, <laughs> that's a word that they were calling the American blacks, Akata, the Nigerians. Akata is a word that they use for American blacks. And Wesley Snipes was like, yo, what is... So, that word, Akata, Akata is a term that is used to describe, you know, um, foreign blacks in Nigeria. So, they'll usually call it Akata, like that person, Akata. I think the way it's used determines if it's being derogatory or not. It's kind of like saying nigga, like, so I can call you nigga and it'd be cool. They all, what up, my nigga? Or they can say, you know, this guy's a nigga. It, could, it depends on how it's used. It kind of determines the the tonality, the, the, the context determines, you know, if it's derogatory or not. So it's not always just a derogatory thing. Uh, someone could just be using that to decide, oh, it, is that person I cut that or no? And they'll tell you. Like oftentimes people will ask about me, like, yo, is he is this guy a kata? No. Is this a kata shit you keep calling us? And the guy goes, We don't want to work with cotton pickers. And then Wesley wow. beats the shit out of them. And but it's the truth. So African Americans and Africans have always had friction, you understand? But Africans and I know some Africans are going to probably be like, I don't like what you say. Man, whatever. People were upset over this clip. This clip sounds like a viral on Twitter. Why right? are they getting upset? In their clip? First of all, it's the truth. Africans come to America. And then there's a lot of African, my African-American friends say, man, a lot of Africans are really mean towards us. They're really nasty towards us because they feel they're better towards us. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the wrong attitude to take because I'm West African, but I was born here. My friends are African-American and African. I think it's fucked up because here's the thing. Africa, like whether you say Nigerians or 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 Ethiopians, whatever, we were colonized by Europeans, man. We were colonized. We were treated like shit. Look at South Africa. With all the Dutch, they've shit on South Africans, man. And finally, I think South Africans, with the help of Julius Malim and all these, they're trying to take some of their shit back. Dutch people are fucked up towards fucking black Africans. And the fact that a South African a, a white South African calls himself African to me is fucking ridiculous. Like, you're Dutch. You just didn't leave. How the fuck do you steal African from somebody? How do you go when white South Africans, white, that's not even real. You're not even genetically an African. The fuck? You don't even live amongst the black ones. It's that same mentality that Africans have when they come to, and I've had relatives, man, I'm not going to name them. I've had relatives go, oh, we're better than. African Americans, I go, no, we're not. Because I was just stopped by the police the other day. And I'm going to tell you, I used to try to use that African accent. You know what I mean? <laughs> stop and say, uh, I'm sorry, officer, what is the problem? I am not the same as them. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I'm, I'm not going to act like, you know, of course, there's a, a slight cultural difference when you're African because we have, because you know what it is? In Africa, usually they'll show African Americans in a certain light. Uh-huh. So Africans will have this this concept of how Africans are African Americans are. And then in America they would show us Tarzan. They would show us Tarzan and Africans suffering from with flies on their faces, starving, you know, three hundred African kids in a school yeah. with no books. So we have so they would used to call me black African booty scratcher. They used to call me names. That was Godfrey the comedian. He is a Nigerian American and he's discussing you know the the rift between africans and african americans so he touched on a few things i'm just going to discuss some of it uh but yeah the, you know when africans move you definitely have africans who think that we're better because we know where we're from or you know we're educated or whatever it is you know and it's total bullshit like we're not any better than anybody because like he was saying listen when i get pulled over in the united states i'm scared for my life it doesn't matter to a cop that i'm african or african-american they see the color of my skin and they only think one thing so we all get treated the same whether you think you're better or not you get treated, you could be in the ghetto or you can be in a nice suburban neighborhood. 
upper class, whatever. We all get treated the same as black people in America. And that is actually a conversation um, that I try to have with some of my African friends back home when everyone's so desperate to come to America when they just don't understand the reality of being black in America. Like, it's not the same. You have white missionaries coming to tell you how great America is, but they leave one small part out, or major part, which is you're not going to get treated the same. So when they come to our countries, we, we, we're inviting, we're communal, you know, um, we welcome people kind of like what Fairy Ricky was saying in the interview with Vlad, where it's like, he thinks African Americans just welcome Africans and we're like, Hey, you know, we'll take your stuff and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's, that's how we are. You got it from somewhere. You know, it's a communal mindset. It's a different mindset. America is individualistic. Most African countries are communal. So we think about the community and how things and decisions impact the community versus just our individual self. And so we love hosting people. We love welcoming people and showing them our culture. And so that's kind of what happened with, with uh, colonizers. They came in that way. We're just kind of being ourselves and then things turn. But so Godfrey is saying, yeah, you have people that think they're better because they know certain things about where they're from and their history. And a lot of that has to do with media. What African Americans are shown or what the West is shown about Africa is we're poor, we need help, blah, blah, blah. And then what they show about African Americans to us in Africa is these people are just ghetto. They just know how to twerk, music videos, be rappers, or just be an athlete. And these, this is a conditioning of the mind. And so you have to choose now with platforms like YouTube or Google or the internet in general, you can choose to look at content like this from an actual African who lives in you know, uh, West Africa and also has lived in America to tell you exactly what it's like on both sides. To, to, to my African friends, I often try to describe and tell them, listen, America it has a lot of great things. I mean, America is America for a reason in terms of its reputation. There are great things to take advantage of, uh, opportunities to take advantage of. But in terms of how you're treated, you're treated based on your skin color. And that's just the reality. I mean, take it or leave it. I'm not, just the same way African-Americans ask me about what Africa is like. And I answer to them, hey, just go visit for yourself and see, you know, you get so tired of having conversations about what America is like with Africans that, and, and the crazy thing is like, people will start arguing with you and try to teach you about what America is like, even though they've never been there. So anyways, you get tired of that so much that you just say, okay, and you kind of let it go. And some of these people will probably never get to see America in their lifetime. And some may, and then they'll discover for themselves like, oh, um yeah we do get treated differently now because of everything going on in america with with you know the killings the innocent killings of black people i, I shouldn't say now because it's hap it's been happening but because of media and the openness of the internet you're able to see these things in the news and see that another innocent black boy and black man has been killed you see all these things so people are starting to become more aware of what black america really is like and people will ask me hey is this is this real like do people i tell me like yeah you know uh, it's it's it sucks to be harassed just for being black it sucks to be pulled over taken out of your car put on the curb putting handcuffs and then an officer coming back and releasing you and say oh you can go home now it's like it messes you up mentally like you don't see that done to other people but when you're black there is just a lot of harassment that goes on for being black you know driving while black is real you know there's certain neighborhoods that you know people just look at you different they they treat you different you go to a store people walking around with you and those things are real so um whether you're african or african-american we all deal with those issues I think we need to focus more on 
how we can work together. And that's been something that I've been trying to do. Um, and I often talk about at Dreams and Ambition that I believe my purpose is to help bridge that gap um, as a person who is sees both sides of the coin, you know, who his experiences and a foothold on both sides and can give a, a, a true perspective and true insight on what these are really like. And as somebody who I see the opportunities, I know where we can work together. And so right now it's more about how can we work together, you know, finding areas that we can work together in business. You know, I think that will be the, I, that is really the only platform we should begin working together is through business. Uh, unfortunately, as um, John Sally was discussing on Vlad TV, there's a fear that we have within ourselves as black people. We fear each other. You know, we don't really do business well together. Black people, all the right, period. And it's unfortunate. You know, you, you have people, uh, black people, who would rather do business with a white or Asian person than a black person. And that's unfortunate, you know, because you have, you know, now you're putting a middleman. And that is why you have colonization. You know, you now you have to have a white person come in between you and do that stuff. And so people capitalize on that because they know that we're not unified. So unity, you know, has to come. Unity should be a priority for us in trying to understand our cultures and trying to understand each other and trying to work together in order to make everything better for us. You have to empower yourself economically um, anywhere you are in order to have true change and true power and control like america black america needs to be a lot more empowered economically and i can say from my experience living in america i don't see um enough economic empowerment happening in america to make the kind of changes that black americans want i just don't see it i think that that will have to happen on the African continent and then brought back that economic power being brought back um, in order to start getting that kind of change. So going back to Akon and what he said about the opportunities in Africa, those are real and you will have to go take those. Like it, talking to me is not going to do anything. Uh, I shouldn't say not going to do it. It might inspire you, but I also got my own thing, unless we're trying to do business together in a real way, you know, there's only so much that me describing things to you is going to do. So I don't see enough economic empowerment. You can have Jay-Z be a billionaire, but how many other black billionaires can you can you build? You have Robert Smith, Jay-Z, Oprah. I can't think of any other black American billionaires. And you can change that and so and millionaires that i mean you have a lot more but like i said just relative to the population you just don't have as much so you i think the opportunities are just much greater on the african continent the opportunities to make significantly more money to to make economic change in america for black people is a lot more real on the african continent in countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, Liberia, Ethiopia, you know, uh, South Africa, um, Tanzania, there, there's a bunch of places. You can have Gabon, you know, you can have real economic opportunities that you can then transfer some of that wealth back to America and start making real changes for the black community in America. So that's that. My name is Shalom. Um, Subscribe to my channel for more content and let me know what you guys think. Give me your feedback, give me your responses, like, share, and comment so that we can keep this going. And let's have more productive conversation to do more for us, for our people. So that's that.